to politics now. Much has been said about the strong sentences handed out to those convicted for their part in this summer's riots. But should they face further punishment, like losing their council house? That's been one of the hot topics at the Labour conference in Liverpool, and that's where we can join our political editor, Tim Donovan, who's there for us. Um, Tim, is Labour united on this one? Well, they're doing a lot of talking, a lot of discussing uh, about this, and, and, and it's certainly true that the riots have added a focus to a review of policies in this area that was already underway, and, and it's the familiar dilemma they have of trying to come up with policies, solutions to underlying problems to crime and, and why people re-offend, while combining that with strong punishments, which it's quite clear uh, the public want to see. He delayed returning from holiday and when he did get back, the reception was less than warm. The riots may have been a turning point in Boris Johnson's mayoralty, or well, that's what Labour hopes. The spectre of the riots, I believe, was potentially a Hurricane Katrina moment for Boris Johnson. Absent, disconnected, unpopular on the streets. To which the mayor's office said today that he had got back to London as soon as he could and had visited every affected part of the city within a fortnight, addressing the concerns of Londoners. But Labour are having their own internal debate about how best to respond to the issues raised by the riots. Some, yes, warn there should be no hasty knee-jerk reactions. But others are saying, why should the Conservatives outflank us, sounding tough on law and order? Focus groups are telling Labour that people back strong punishment for those involved in the trouble. There would be anarchy on the streets otherwise, um, so I think it, it's justifiable that they got like a more severe sentence. Obviously the message is to not do it again, so then in that respect, yeah, no, I don't think it's too hard. I think they should be obliged to, to pay back for the crime, to pay back to the community. But at this fringe meeting, there were warnings of more demonisation of the young. Some people have been pointed the finger out, they've been blamed, they would have been called like hoodlums and all this like, type of thing. Some Labour councils, like Southwark and Greenwich, have courted controversy with threats to evict tenants involved in the disorder, and thus perhaps their families too. You know, I'm not interested in putting families out onto the street in Sussex. And that's not what I'm about. But, you know, one can see in appropriate circumstances, possession proceedings are appropriate. You know, you otherwise... rule it out, then. It is no, possible but, but that you could evict a family because their 18- or 19-year-old has, has done it. I can't say that that's not a possibility, but I would be extremely surprised if that did happen. But some think Labour needs to tread with care here. If... Uh, the proposal is simply to evict people because of one criminal act and to convict their entire family who are innocent of that. I think that's not something we want to see. Today, Labour announced a review of policing carried out by former Met Commissioner Lord Stevens. And with the memory still fresh of those who lost homes and property during last month's disorder, they're promising a new law giving more rights to victims. Meanwhile, Tim, um, prioritising working people uh, for social housing, which Ed Miliband touched upon yesterday, uh, some growing concerns. Well, a potential row here, uh, either that or a row narrowly averted, and certainly some confusion, are centred on how far Ed Miliband is backing Newham in what they want to do, i.e. prioritising, as you say, uh, people in work in allocation of social housing. Now, certainly a number of MPs here I've been speaking to are very concerned about this policy. Uh, they think it uh, would demonise the unemployed. They think it's quite simply unfair. And what they were very concerned about was uh, the idea that this might be something that was... Uh, compulsory that uh, Ed Miliband might want to legislate and that was the impression some of us had been given that he did want this to become a, uh, a firm measure. Now his words in his speech yesterday were these, every council should recognise the contribution that people are making, uh, which is ambiguous and when one seeks clarification from the Labour Party press office they will say only refer to that speech. But I think perhaps under pressure from Labour MPs he's not prepared to make this compulsory at this stage but it's something he'd like to see councils doing. Tim, thanks very much. Stay with us still to come tonight.